Now, we're going to have two strops and we'll make them the same length, which it really doesn't matter. And also this uh, width of timber, it can be whatever width of timber you've got. I wouldn't go below, say, uh, 5 eighths or 16 mil because then it can start to bend, depending on your timber. Um, but if it's thicker, well, that's fine too. Once more, I'll be using the saw box. Whoops, get it around the right way. And this really has become an invaluable part of working inside. And you'll see why in a minute, which I've explained earlier, the previous video. The important thing with um, these blades is you've got to have the right tension on there or else there we go it doesn't work properly so what I want to do is square the ends off first pop them in there and there we go and you'll notice I haven't got much room behind me but I'm still able to use the saw. Two square ends and I'll cut these at 290 I think. And again look the measurement's not super critical. Um, 290 seems to work. Any longer and it can become a bit cumbersome. Any shorter and you'll think you want it longer so that's what I came up with anyway. So square the ends off here. Drop your saw down. There. And here we go. Now I did say before, there's a big benefit of having this type of saw. Once more, it's to do with cleaning up. If you look at all the mess on the saw, it's all on the saw, it's not on the floor. That's it, done. Measure up, 200. Bring that line across. Now one of these, I'm going to do with leather on one side and the other one I'm going to have leather on both sides and I'll explain that a little bit later on. Well, obviously what you could do once you've done that you can just glue leather on with contact cement and it'll be fine, it'll work great. These, they have handles so you can hang on to it whilst you're doing it but if you just did it square then you can just put it into the vise, it's going to work brilliantly in the vise and if you want a handle I'll show you what I've come up with so if I come down 40 mil and I'm going to put a 30 mil hole in there if you want to find half of this instead of measuring it and trying to be spot on using a ruler you can use the rule but you don't have to measure just go from this corner and swing your ruler around until you get something you can divide, in this case, divide by two. So I'll swing that around. That measurement there is 90. So 45 is half of 90. That is going to be the middle. Same, same. If I didn't want to pick 90, I could have 60. Put it on that corner, swing it down. That's 60, mark 30. That's going to be the middle. With this one here, use that corner. Come down, I mark 100 on this edge. Mark where 50 is, and that's going to be the middle. So what I want to do is now I'm going to mark that centre in both of them, and get my drill. Put a very fine drill bit in there. I'll use my bench hook that we made in a previous video. A bit of sacrificial timber on it and I'm going to drill straight down it's got a hole 
right on both sides. Grab a compass. There's one here. I'm going to use this force in a bit, and I know it's 30 mil, so I'm not worried about drawing the inside circle. But what I do want to do is draw a circle that's 10 mil bigger in diameter. So I've set my compass up. This is 30 mil, which is a radius of 15 mil. I've set my compass up to have a radius of 20 mil, which is there. And I'm just going to draw a circle on both sides. Get the bench hook again with a bit of sacrificial plywood in it. Force a bit. Now you can use a spade bit. I don't particularly like using them, especially indoors because they make such a mess. And also the depth of the spade bit, the pointed part of the spade bit, goes into your job too far. Whereas here, I just want a little bit of a nipple coming through on the other side so I can drill back on it. I'll show you what I mean. Now I've just got a little bit of a nipple of a hole coming through so I can then go back in the other way and it'll give me a nice cut and there you have it. Now the leather I've got, I've got some very supple suede and much coarser black buffalo hide. This one I'm going to put suede on one side, buffalo hide on the other. And this one, I'll just put buffalo hide on. Research would suggest there's no difference between using the shiny side of the hide or the rough side. I personally prefer the rough side. But if you're going to do that, what I have found is you have to break down the skin itself using a 100 grit sandpaper or something like that. So I'll just give it a rough. I don't know if you can see that, but the glue or whatever it is they've got in the tanning process comes off and gives me a much better surface to grip on. I have tried it before without sanding it and the contact cement just congeals into little pools and it won't stick to the skin. The suede on the other hand, it's fine. It'll glue straight on. So what we might do is We'll cut a straight edge first, make sure this is going to be long enough. Yep. We'll cut, ouch. We'll cut a straight edge off of here. And also we'll cut a straight edge here. A bit of paper down so I don't make a mess everywhere. Make sure you get a good coating on all the leather. Oh, it should be tacky enough now to put this one on. Just line it up with this line that you drew here. Roll it down. That's it. Put some glue on the other side. Starting to tack off now. Make sure you put the right side down. Now just put it in the vise. Whack a bit of pressure on it. And we measure up the other side. 